Good morning and thank you for joining me again for another Bit Repairs video. My name's Wayne and today we are looking at a iPhone XS that's been sent in because it keeps rebooting every two or three minutes. Um, so symptoms of this are you've got your phone, um, unlock it and as soon as you've unlocked it um, you get a few minutes usage out of it and suddenly the phone will just reboot. So you'll, uh, you'll notice that the phone is also a little bit sluggish um, while it's in use. I just want to make sure there's no customer image on here. Um, so wait for it to boot up a second. Uh, no, it's okay. Uh, so you wait for it to boot up. It will stay at this screen for a long time, really. Um, it, it won't reboot at all on this screen. Uh, just want to make sure there's no picture when I unlock. Now it's okay. Uh, let me just see. Um, no, we're okay. So, uh, once you've got to this screen now, um, you will notice that uh, the phone acts a bit sluggish. So, it's not quite performing as it should be. You're not getting that usual responsiveness that you normally get. Um, so that's the issue that you'll be noticing with this. And then suddenly, after about two or three minutes, the phone will just, boom, crash. Um, reboot, Apple logo, straight off, straight back on again. Um, so this symptom here, uh, we need to have a little look first. Let's just uh, make sure we're covered up here because we're about to go into settings, which will probably show the name on there of the person. You notice it's going really sluggish there now, going into settings. Uh, yeah, it does come up with the customer's name. Uh, then we go into um, privacy, I'm going to go into. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to go down here to analytics and improvements. Uh, and then up here is the option for analytics data. Okay. Uh, so you scroll down here and you're looking for uh, panic log, uh, the panic log. There we go. See here it says panic full, panic full. It's doing a lot of panicking this phone is. Um, it's been doing a lot of panicking for quite a while by the looks of things. So let's just look down to the bottom. Uh, it doesn't really matter where, they're probably all going to be the same. Um, I'll just pick a random one. There we go. So what we're looking for here is this line here. Um, so we've got Panic CPU uh, Caller 1. Um, Panic CPU 1 Caller, sorry. Uh, and then we've got SD 1 Missing Sensor. SD 1 Missing Sensor. You really can't see it from there, I don't think. I'm at full zoom on the camera. Um, but if you have a look on there, you will see... In fact, I could probably plug you into this one and then you can see, let me just see if this works. Uh, trust. It's going to reboot in a minute, so there we go. So I'll go to camera two. Uh, you will see, ah, it's rebooted. Uh, I won't stay plugged into it, but you've seen on there for a second. If you just pause the YouTube video, you'll see um, on around about the, um, the, I think it was about the fifth, sixth line, something like that, um, you will notice that there was a line that said PRS0 um, as being the item that was faulty. So I've got from my panic log uh, that PRS0 is the pressure sensor on the logic board. Uh, sorry, not on the logic board, on the charging port. So, in theory, if I go and change that charging port, that should fix this problem. Um, now, if you already know how to change the charging port, then you can stop this video right now, um, because that's what I'm about to do on this phone. However, I thought it might be handy for a few people to be able to see how to change the charging port uh, on an iPhone XS because there's quite a lot you have to do on it, really. There's, uh, there's a heck of a lot you've got to take out. So someone's already taken out the base screws on this phone for me. Um, so here, what we're going to do is, let's just get this loose at the top. There we go. So that's that open now. All the cages are still on there. 
So first thing you have to do when you're changing the logic board, uh, sorry, changing the charge port on these, uh, is you've got to take off the shield first for the uh, the board. So you have to take off this uh, this uh, cable clamp. This just holds all the cables down. So we take that off. You'll notice there's one different screw in the middle here. So there's one Phillips and the rest are tri-wing. So we pull that off. That's best. That's been off before that has, by the looks of things. Then we got our tweezers. Uh, and the first thing we're going to do on this is we pull the battery. So pull the battery. Now we're going to pull the screen. So let's get the screen off. Okay. Take off the face ID. Yeah, that's definitely been off before because that flex is usually quite well attached. So we put the screen to one side. We don't really need to do anything with that anymore. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to um, unplug everything from the logic board. Um, what you should do first with this, um, I know on this already, I've had it that many times, there it is, the, uh, the, the charging port. Uh, I must have had it around about 20, 30 times now so far. So as soon as I see PRS zero, you change the, change the charger port. Now, there's something really important to know about this now, is not all charging ports are made equally. Um, you'll buy charging ports from suppliers thinking that they're gonna work. Uh, they don't work sometimes. You're gonna have this exact same problem even after you've changed the charging port because there's a lot of dodgy charging ports out there. So we eject the SIM tray. I will show you how to tell the difference between a good and a dodgy charging port. Uh, the reason this has happened, it's probably had water damage, this board has. Um, that is probably what's happened with the, um, with the port at the bottom of this. So there's a small piece of metal here which we just pull out. So we put that next to its associated screw. There is a standoff here. Goes straight through the board. That one there. So I put these all in line here. So I put all, all three of these in one line. Let's get this. Get the face ID flex. Okay, we're just gonna lift that up now. Be very careful with this. It's very sensitive, it's very delicate. Okay, pull that to one side. We're gonna unplug these two antennas from the top. Okay. Fold them back. So once we've done that, we've unplugged everything, the logic board should now be free to just raise out. Okay. On these ones, you pull the logic board out from the top of the phone. Seems to make it much easier. So um, pulling the logic board out from the top of the phone uh, is much easier on the XS. Uh, not sure why yet. I've never really looked at all of the uh, the screw configurations on that and, and how it all does. But for some reason, if you pull it out from the top, it comes out much, much easier. Uh, right, so what we're going to do now is we are now ready to start removing this charger port, but we're going to have to carry on with these screws at the bottom first. So screws at the bottom, we've got tri-wings, we've got a row all the way along here. It looks like somebody's already done this before. Uh, hold on a sec, I've just got the phone ringing there, so I've just got to, uh, to sort that out. Sorry about that. A little bit early in the morning, so I'm uh, trying to get an early start on the uh, on these things. It looks like somebody's already changed the charging port because half of these screws aren't in the right place. Um, so it may be that somebody has tried to install a new charging port on this. I notice this because all of these screws along here are usually tri-wing screws. Uh, let me just get another magnetic pad. So all the screws along this plate here are usually tri-wing. 
Uh, and these are the normal Philips ones. So, just going to unscrew them. Okay. Uh, just going to unscrew those. And then we've got a tri wing one here. Going to unscrew that. So, yeah, somebody has already had this plate off but I imagine they've changed it with a charging port that is of <coughs> poor quality so that's really not going to help matters with this mm, could be wrong it's quite well stuck down I'm sure on this they are all tri-wing um, Especially this one here, that's usually tri-wing as well. Okay, so that's that one done. Lift that one up. I'm just going to unscrew these two screws here for the Taptic engine at the side. Put them up to one side. Try and keep your screws in a nice order. Try and group them together. So what you'll find here is I've put um, on my screw pad here... We've got two screws, these are for the Taptic engine. This one here is also for the Taptic engine. So what I'm gonna do now, when I take that Taptic engine out, I'm gonna put that here in this little gap, or as close as I can to it. Now we've got all of these little standoffs around here. So all these little standoffs, I'm gonna take these all out, and I'm gonna put them all in order down at the bottom here. So this is how I manage my screw order. Um, this is how I try and make sure everything goes back in the same place. You can take pictures of it as well if that helps. So now down here, I'm going to put that part underneath those screws so I know that's where that came from. So <clears throat> I've done enough of them that I'm pretty sure where they all came from now anyway. But, uh, you know, it's hopefully I'm helping you with some of this information. So... Let's get some of this lifted out. Now there's a little piece up at the top here. You'll notice there's a little piece. Yeah, maybe this hasn't been changed actually, this charging port. I'm changing my mind on this now. Um, that seems to be... Uh, so, yeah, that is, that is original glue, that is. So, okay, someone's possibly just been playing around with the screws. Unless I'm wrong. They may be wrong. I have been known to be wrong before. Not very often, but... Right, so that comes unplugged from the board here. And that's going to go up at the top. This here, you can't really get this wrong. Um, you know, it's... Really, if you put that back in the wrong place, you shouldn't be fixing phones. Um, so, now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the top here. Downwards. And we should have... Uh, first of all, we've got another standoff about that standoff you can't get to the screws here without that so we're going to get that last standoff now remember that standoff because that came out after all of the bits of plastic had come out now we've got here um, we've got some screws holding in the charger port at the bottom you can see when you're looking at it at an angle so i'm going to unscrew those get my tweezers in look that one out okay Then we got this one down here. So that's our pressure sensor there. We'll have a look at that under the microscope in a minute and see if that is indeed damaged. Um, because if it is, then we will know then exactly uh, exactly why this charging port is coming up has failed. Um, so we've got a small piece of plastic here. So that just comes out to one side. And then we unscrew that little screw there. Okay, so we're going to unscrew that. That goes next to there at the bottom again. Okay, so this char this charging port now goes up and behind the battery. So you've got a couple of choices here now. You can either remove the battery or you can try and get it out from behind the, um, the battery. 
Um, I usually prefer to try and get it up from behind because pulling all of these pull tabs on the battery can be a right nightmare. Um, so I usually prefer to try and get it out from behind the battery there because it's not very well glued down behind the battery. So it's a little tiny glue strip. So you just pull it around a little bit side to side and it should just slot out from the side of the battery there. Okay. As you can see there, it's just slotted out from the side of the battery. I hope that was visible on the camera because, uh, there we go. I hope that was visible because that was quite awkward, that was. So that's just been done. That's slotted out from the side of the battery. Uh, so that's our charger port out now. So should we have a little look under the microscope and see if we can see any damage to this pressure sensor down here. Um, whether it's been lasered, whether there's, I uh, doubt it's been lasered because I don't think anything's been done there. Um, but anyway, let's go to, the, uh, go to the microscope camera and we'll have a little peek here to see if we can see any, uh, any, any damage to this port. Um, so let's have a little look. We can see it is chock full of something. Looks like sand. Um, so we can see that that is an issue there. Um, let's have a little look closer at some of these parts on the opposite side. None of them are looking damaged. Um, just being chock full of sand is not a good enough excuse for it to stop working. Um, but if there's sand in there, it stands to reason that perhaps water's got in there as well. Um, so these things, they are pretty waterproof. There's, uh, there's like a, a, a black gel on the top of it. Um, so see there, there's all of that gel over the top. So it's like a, it's like a black goop inside it. So I imagine it's probably just had some water ingress or something. I can't see any on here. Which makes you wonder, actually. Hopefully I am right that this charging port's faulty. That's okay. That's all okay. I can't see any physical damage to this port. I can't see any physical problems. So I'm looking on the actual port itself. No, I'm not seeing any actual physical problems with this port. Um, so, that's all okay on top. That's all okay there. Not seeing any signs of corrosion to the port. Um, right, we've got it out anyway, so let's just change it. Um, where's my spare charging port? We've got another charging port here. Let's go back to microscope, uh, sorry, camera view. Uh, right, so... This is the replacement charging port that I'm going to use. Um, <clears throat> so from here, uh, we've got um, a piece of plastic missing. We pulled a piece of plastic out of the phone. So this piece of plastic that I pulled off this charger uh, when I re removed it from the phone is going to have to go back in again. So let's get your tweezers just behind there, in behind that little component. Okay, I'm just going to pry that off from that piece of plastic because this piece of plastic still needed. The charging port's not needed, that's gonna to go to one side, but the piece of plastic is needed. So, this is the charging port, so I'm gonna take off this little sticky panel at the back here. Okay, I'm gonna take off this little sticky panel at the back here. I'm gonna take this one off, there's no point leaving them on. Okay, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and slide this down the side of the battery so I'm going to bend that up a little bit there. I'm going to slide that down the side of the battery. Come on, don't make a fool of me while I'm on a live video. Uh, do anything you want while you're on your own. Okay. Just gonna slide in, slide in behind the battery. There we go. Pull it up a little bit too high. Pull it up a bit too high. Now we just need to slot it behind this antenna down here. Okay. 
There we go. Slotted in nicely behind that antenna. Okay. And then we want before it sticks, because it is going to stick, it's going to stick quite readily. We want to just push it into position. Get it nicely attached into position, into the right place. Okay. So that's, that's in there now. Okay, that's where it came from. You can tell because we've got these lines here, we've got these two ports, these two screw ports are lined up here. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get the two screws that came in the bottom. We need to do this in the reverse order, okay? Remember, you do this in the reverse order, the exact reverse order that you disassembled it. Because these things have to go in in a specific order. Otherwise you'll get part way through and the screw just won't go in. Okay, so that's in. That's one screw in. I say you've got to do it in a specific order. You've got to do most of it in a specific order. Um, okay, another one down the bottom here. They are a bit awkward to get in these screws down the bottom. Especially when you're trying to do a YouTube video for somebody with cameras hanging around everywhere. <laughs> okay. Yeah, if you're trying to get these, uh, if you're trying to get these camera angles, then it does affect your ability to be able to do the repair as well. Sometimes I, I feel for these people. So we're putting this screw in at the bottom down here, right? So we've got that in. Now we remember we had our piece of plastic that needed to go back in again. So we've got that that goes in, goes in down at the bottom down here on this port. So that came, that pushes up there. Then we had that slotted nicely down into the bottom here. Then you'll notice the microphone first. That just pops back onto its support brackets. Now here, this charging port comes with, this charging port here comes with a little cover just to cover up the, uh, the component. Because um, obviously dust does get onto it. You'll notice this one is a nice black Perfect, brand new, clean. So you can tell whether it's a genuine charging port here. Um, first thing is on this charging port, you'll notice all of these components are present. So <clears throat> you'll see a row of components here, row of components here. This part's present on the back of it. You've got the components on the back of that component that I've just turned over. So if any of these things are missing, then it's a clear sign that this is not a good quality component. So let's push that into there. That just kind of folds over, bends into place. Don't worry about it not staying in for now, not staying in perfect for now. Um, we'll sort that out later. So now what we're going to do is we've got our alignment here. Let's push that over, fold that over there nicely. So we're part way there now. Let's get the Taptic engine. That's going to go in next. So we're going to just click that into the port. Push that in. Should just click in. There we go. That's just clipped into place. I'm going to put these two screws in here on the left hand side. You'll notice they're in the right position on my pad so I know where they are. Okay. That's good. Right, uh, let's try and give you a bit of a different view as well. So I'll give you a uh, camera four. This is, it's not quite as good, this camera. Uh, it's just a little web camera, this is. Um, but uh, hopefully it gives you a bit of a, a different view of the things. Uh, you can't really see it that well with that camera. I might be better off just switching back to the Sony. So that's back onto there again. Now what we got, remember all of these down here? Let's switch back to the main camera. There we go. I quite like that, it gives you a good overview, it gives you a good top-down view. So next one, 
This bit here, this piece of plastic, you've got a little foam paddy bit which pushes down on this pressure sensor down here. Okay, now we're going to get our standoff. We're going to try and remember all of the points for these. So we've got these three standoff screws. One goes down in the far left corner. One next along goes down there. And then the next one goes onto the actual charging port itself. So we're running low on screws now means we must be getting close. Speaker goes back in again down here. Speaker just goes slotting in nicely. Okay. Nice fit on there. Perfect. All done. Okay. Then what we're going to do, going to get, see that piece there, that connecting? So that clips over and onto the speaker. So push it over. I'll use my tweezers much easier with the tweezers, pushes in, over, and then it just clicks into place like that. Okay. Next, we're going to plug this little shield back on again. Here, there's a little shield that came off. I can tell someone's been at this before because this screw does not go here. This screw is completely wrong. That is supposed to be a standoff screw, and that is not supposed to go there. Um, so it shouldn't affect it, really. It's just holding it all down. Uh, then we've got this one going in here, these two little uh, metal shields connecting in down here. And then that's the, uh, that is all of the screws that came out have gone straight back into it again. Okay, that's all of those off. So I'm going to get me Phillips. Um, like I say, I'm pretty sure all of these screws are incorrect. Someone's had a play around with this before. Okay. Screw that one in, screw the next one in, and then we just got to put the board in next. We're going to go back to board. Uh, so we've got that one there. One last screw. This is a tri wing that someone's put in there. Right. Let's get the board back in again. Now, bit of a nightmare here. All of these bits are in the way. So start from the bottom, try and push these out to one side first. Okay slot it in from the side with all of these. Try not to get any of these under the board. Um, it's a bit of a bit of an issue when you've got the board in, you've screwed it all down and then you suddenly realize that you've got these connectors are actually underneath the board. Um, it happens quite regular. Um, just try and be uh, try and be wary. These ones at the top as well, see them two antennas? Try and be wary of those two. Make sure they're not going under the board because you'll put this down and then you'll only have to take the whole thing back out again. So you should notice once all of these are connected down, just clip them all in. Um, standard with all FPC connectors, you're looking for a nice firm click as you're, as you're pushing it into place. If you don't get that click, try not to force it. Um, any kind of forcing on this is gonna damage it. Uh, so next part is this little um, piece of plastic. This went down here in this little gap. It's not going to be perfect. It just stops things from rubbing around. There we go. That's going to go back in. Stops little uh, micro vibrations, stops things from rubbing. Uh, right. So we're going to plug these antennas in at the top. Start with the little one. Fold them over. Click. Click. I know I make it look slightly easier than it is. It's just I've done it that many times before. You'll, you'll get good at this. As you're going through, you will get good at doing these FPC connectors. That little piece of metal goes over there. Then we've got the standoff screw from the top. We're almost ready to turn this phone back on again. Okay, that's done. Click that connector in. The, uh, the face ID flex at the top, try and be careful with this. They are delicate. The amount of times I have to fix the damn things. Um, so they are a delicate component. Connect that board, that board goes in there. So that should slot in. See like it's not going in, don't force it. Just try, start again. There we go. See I didn't have to force it in. I was. 
I was just persistent. You just have to make sure that it goes in right, but don't force it. Don't, don't lose your rag and go, oh, I can't get that in, and then just try and rag it in. You will damage it doing that. So just be careful, just slot it in slowly. Right, next step, let's connect. I always connect the, the front uh, face ID flex first at this angle, that goes in, and then I flick the screen over to the side, and then I now connect in the screen. Okay, that's the screen connected. Battery's going on. Okay, now let's boot it. I know I've not put some screws in for the board. I'm just going to get it booted first. Save myself a little bit of time. Okay, so let's just put this one in here. Yeah, we're booting at the moment. Okay, right, we're up and running, we're booted. Now let's see if we're sluggish. Are we sluggish? No, we're not sluggish at all. I love that, that is a, that is a responsive phone now, that is. So we're up and running, we're on. Um, hopefully, we're not gonna get a reboot now. So that's the charging port replaced. I'm just gonna leave it on that screen. I'll just touch it every now and again just to get it to move back and forth. Let's get this screw in at the top here. Screw in, that's the board securing down now. So like I say, this is quite a common, uh, common fault on these. Um, I don't know whether it's blowing, it might be the sensors blowing. Um, it could be water damage. You notice there was quite a lot of sand inside there, so it could have been that. Um, but they're just going all the time. But the problem is, is you might buy one from, um, I mean, oh, what's that company a lot of people are using for parts? Uh, <clears throat> oh, actually, I completely forgot to spot that my daughter has just sent me a message on the, uh, on the chat. And I wasn't looking at chat at all. Uh, so let's just say morning. There we are. Right. Um, so replace base, that's the one. A lot of people are ordering from replace base. Um, the problem is they've got mixed quality parts. I know it's uh, a lot of their parts are high quality, but their charging ports, some of them are good, some of them are dodgy. So be careful, you're ordering from them and you're changing out a faulty part for a faulty part. So. You're thinking, why has it not worked? I'm going to send it to a micro solder. It must be the board. Yeah? So, you're sending it off to a micro solder because you think it's the board, but it's not the board. It's still the charging port that's faulty. It's still the charging port that's got the exact same problem that it did have before because you've now replaced a faulty part for a faulty part. Um, it's a huge problem out there. So I've got some very good suppliers, um, I trust them, and I know that every part that they deliver me is the same quality every time. So, you know, they, they do get the odd faulty charging parts, they do get the odd faulty parts, but the majority of them, 99% of the time, they're good, high quality parts, um, and they work. And that is what you need, you need a supplier of good quality parts. Uh, or you can just send it in to me, um, it's, uh, the, the website is bitrepairs.com, www.bitrepairs.com. Um, I know my daughter says to me, tell people to hit the bell, is it? Um, to, uh, to get people to, to be notified when there's new videos. So yeah, it's, uh, hit the bell, notifications, um, and, uh, yeah, like and subscribe if you like this video. Um, that is it for now. That's this phone fixed. Uh, it also happens the same on the iPhone X's, it also happens the same on the iPhone 8's, on the XR's, it happens the same on the iPhone 11's, the iPhone 12's, they've all got this same problem. They're missing a sensor and the CPU is going into panic mode. So you need to try and find out which sensor that is that it's missing, 
replace it and that's it it'll stop the phone from rebooting it's the same on almost every single phone up from iphone 7 so thanks for joining me my name's wayne like subscribe hit that bell icon and i'll see you for the next video thanks very much bye bye